Well, it turns out um, that when deaf children are born of hearing parents, in the typical circumstance, they learn a language just like anyone else because they're in an environment where they can learn uh, sign language. And if all was good in the world, that would always be the case. But in some situations, these children of uh, deaf children of hearing parents don't have access to uh, sign language. And what happens in these cases is that spontaneously these kids um, generate a language which they use with their parents, which we call home sign. So we can see the first stages of language emergence happening right there with kids communicating with their um, parents without the access to a shared language. But what's really exciting is that we can also see the next stage in some cases. So there are cases where, um, for example, where uh, the policy around deaf education changes in the country. So this happened, for example, in Nicaragua in the 70s. Um, and schools for the deaf are formed. And then lots and lots of kids, with each with their own home signing system, brought together in the school. And what happens then is something really remarkable. In the space of a very short time, over only a few cohorts of kids coming into the school, a new language, a new shared language is created. So these kids are creating spontaneously a shared um, language through communicating with each other in the playground and through new kids coming into the playground. Um, creating these generations that we're talking about, these cultural generations. And we have other cases where, for example, um, population has a sudden increase in deaf individuals. Um, this, this often happens in rural settings, in remote rural settings. And in those cases, we have um, a sudden increase in deaf individuals in the population, again, without a pre-existing sign language. So what we're doing right now is examining the processes that we see in the stages that we see in these emerging sign languages and comparing them to what we get in the lab when we get participants in to do experiments rather like the one I described to you, but using gesture rather than speech. And we're get catching the first tantalizing suggestions that the same processes we see in the lab also play out in the real world in these cases of language emergence. So that's work that I think we'll be seeing more of in uh, the coming years.